Welcome to the Inspire to Invest podcast, where we're sharing stories from real estate investors and how investing has changed their lives. This episode of the Inspire to Invest podcast has been brought to you by Pearl Venture Real Estate Corp. Hey everybody, welcome to Inspire to Invest. I have Anthony and Cameron here with me today from Las Vegas, Nevada. They have a business called Infinite Wealth, as you can see from their backdrop. And they're here today to share some of their knowledge about infinite banking and how it can be beneficial for business owners, real estate investors, and entrepreneurs. And also, they want to shed a light on how this can help people that are in the pursuit of financial freedom. So thank you for joining us today. How are you guys? We are good, and we're excited to be here. Yeah. Thanks for having us, Serena. So I don't know too much about you guys. So maybe you can take me back to the beginning and what life looked like before things like real estate and infinite banking came into the picture. Well, I tell you, I'm a self-subscribed recovering CPA. So my life was super exciting. <laughs> uh, I had my own uh, tax business and we started dealing, working a lot with small business owners and real estate investors and a lot of employees. And then 08 happened. And then I kind of saw, I was on the typical path of a typical financial planner. Yeah. And I saw people's 401k turned into a 201k overnight. Yeah. And they, but I also saw some of my clients did actually really well during that time. Yeah. Those are the ones buying your neighbor's house for 50 cents on the dollar. So that, that was a opening eye for me. Cause I realized I was on the same path as everybody else. Yeah. And unless I did something different, why would I expect a different result? Yeah. So that's what really inspired me to really look at other ways and follow the people that were successful and started reading the books that they were doing, like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, yeah. and Becoming Your Own Banker. And then, but I did something different. I actually started to incorporate them. I didn't mm -hmm. just read them. I, I, I took action. Yeah. Yeah. That's smart. Well said. Yeah. My background previous to kind of my role here was I was a small business owner, Serena. And uh, to be honest, uh, I had some success and I started acquiring some money, some capital, some cash. And I started looking for places to put it. And I met, I couldn't tell you the number of uh, traditional financial advisors I met with. And to be honest, the advice that they were giving me never resonated. In fact, I thought it was crazy. And I'm like, yeah. man, people are actually doing this. Like people put their money away. I was, I was doing it when they were early twenties, and they don't have access to it when they're sixty. I'm like, this is nuts, right? So I didn't do anything, to be honest. As a small business owner, I sat on cash, and by the grace of God, uh, when my wife and I were buying our house, uh, our broker, uh, I asked him if he had a good book for a young couple, and he gave me this weird look, and he reached back on his desk and he handed me Nelson's book, and he goes, "If I would have read this book when I was your age, it would have been the difference of millions of dollars," and it was that. That sentence right there completely changed the financial trajectory uh, of my life and obviously my kids. And yeah. uh, and so I do dove into infinite banking. I spent probably the first year uh, trying to disprove it, right? As I read the book and I'd go in there and I'd try to find some errors or mistakes and I'd take it to a guy that was I was talking to about it. And uh, I couldn't. I couldn't punch any holes in it. And so what I did is I actually started implementing infinite banking on a small level personally and then as that started to perform like the book said it would and like the advisor said it would, uh, then I started kind of expanding that system. And so uh, that was about 15 years ago. And uh, then I've been teaching uh, clients, business owners, and real estate investors uh, the benefits of infinite banking since. Yeah. So now I'm sure that there's people that are watching or listening right now that are like, what the heck is infinite banking? <laughs> so maybe you can shed some light on you know, how that works and why it's so advantageous. Maybe what makes it different from other things that might be out there. Well, I would say if you've been around, particularly in the real estate field, you've probably heard about infinite banking and you've probably heard that this is the most amazing thing you could ever do, or this is a scam and it's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. Those are both, those are both opinions. And to be honest, the facts are somewhere in the middle, right? Th this isn't going to cure all your woes and nor is this a scam or the worst thing ever. Right. But really, w the way that I describe it is the goal is to invest. Right. And thus, we teach our clients, you know, to get our passive income to be more than our monthly expenses. That's yeah. the goal. And yeah. one way to do that is real estate or business or whatever. Yeah. But whatever you're going to invest in, it's going to take some capital. 
And really what infinite banking is, is where do we store that capital? Most of the time, people will just use cash, say for their down payments. That's good, but it's not great. The reason being is because every time you withdraw the money from your account, you break the compound interest curve. Yeah. But with infinite banking, we just really replace a bank. Instead of putting the money in a bank and withdrawing the money to buy the down, invest the down payment, we put this money in a specially designed high cash value life insurance policy. Yeah. And we use that money to invest. So really, I, to me, I view this as like my rewards credit card for investing, right? Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to buy this property anyways, but by adding one extra, I, I wish I could use my rewards credit card. I mean, yeah. that, that would be fantastic, but I can't, yeah. but instead I use my policy. So yeah. instead of just like we're buying anything, instead of using a credit card, we use a policy instead of getting miles, we get more money. So yeah. I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that, this is not an either or. We're not saying put all your money in life insurance or real estate. Yeah. You have the ability to do both. And when you do this, just like your rewards credit card, we're getting additional benefits. Yeah. And those benefits are going to be is your capital is protected typically from creditors and lawsuits. And yeah. we're never going to break that compound interest curve. And instead of getting miles, um, when in retirement, we can turn all this compound interest into tax-free cash flow to yeah. supplement your retirement. Yeah, no, and I think that's so strategic. I met with someone and they had a great metaphor for it. They said, you know, if you planted an apple orchard, would you cut down the trees every time you want to eat or would you pick the apples? And I was like, well, obviously you just pick the apples and it sounds so simple, stupid, but it makes perfect sense when yeah. it comes to infinite banking. And it's just a concept that people find very difficult to wrap their head around, like just in terms of how it actually works. Um, maybe you guys can shed some light on, you know, some of those real life examples. So if someone starts this policy, like, you know, I have a couple hundred thousand dollars I want to invest, like what kind of plan and what that would, would that look like? And then how do they access that for the purpose of investing? Yeah, great, great question, Serena. Uh, as far as policy design goes, based upon somebody's situation, there's a bunch of different ways that we can approach it. Uh, if somebody comes to us and says, hey, I've got a couple hundred thousand dollars, um, that's pretty typical for real estate investors. We've acquired cash. We're sitting on it. Uh, we have several designs that are specific to that. One that I'll touch on here would be kind of a one and done, where maybe we've got 200000 that we probably won't have next year. Yeah. Uh, once we do a, a little bit of education, clients will realize that it's really difficult to get large amounts of money into a policy uh, without running into some tax implications. And so- yeah. One of the workarounds that we have is what we call a one and done, where we'll fund a, a policy uh, with kind of an add-on, uh, a holding account, uh, but then we can turn around and we can access greater than 90% of what's put in there. Yeah. And so what clients are going to do is they're going to write a check, right, one time to the insurance company. It goes on deposit, and then what we'll do is we'll set up some sort of collateralizing or take a loan against that. Yeah. And then what we do is we leverage the policy, and then we turn around and we go and invest into whatever somebody wants to invest in, single family, multifamily, whatever their skill set is best suited for. Yeah. Um, and it's really that loan process that Anthony uh, had mentioned a minute ago that is really the benefit uh, to this in the long run is you can always take your money out of the policy uh, as a surrender, but man, utilizing those loan provisions and being educated on those while you're building equity and appreciation uh, over your lifetime, man, that's really what's going to be key. Can you give any examples of how you both have used it for your own portfolio? I, I tell you, we could have this whole episode on doing it, but you know, th there's a lot of IBC uh, groups out there. A lot of them will use a policy, which we would say for liabilities, yeah, like financing cars and education totally works for that. But we like to focus on using it for assets. Yeah. So for example, I bought a, when I, I bought a many pieces of rental property and that down payment's got to come from somewhere. I use the down payment from my policy and I use that for the down payment. And I use the cash flow from that, um, from that property. Instead of putting it into somebody else's bank, I put it back into my policy and then I can reuse it. And what'll happen is, uh, once that l money is put back, um, we never broke the compound interest curve. Our policy continued to grow 
because we never, we didn't withdraw the money. We leverage against it. Yeah. So what that means is our policy cash value is still what it would have been if we didn't use it. But yeah. now we have one asset, one cash flowing asset. So you know what we do? What Cameron likes to say, rinse and repeat. <laughs> then we buy, because Cameron has great hair. If you're not watching it, they just listen to it. Then we buy a second property. And now we have the cash flow from property one, cash flow from property two. So in theory, we could repay or put that money back in half the time. Yeah. Then we rinse and repeat and buy a third one. Yeah. So it's often used, I've used it for real estate. And when we've done some investments, like we are flipping raw land in the middle of nowhere, I needed some capital to invest in there. Yeah. Came from my policy. And then I took the proceeds or profits from the land flipping and put it back in there so I could reuse it from my policy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's something that's hard for some people to grasp because the idea of like borrowing it from yourself <laughs> and like within the policy and just all the nuances of that, I think sometimes people have a hard time wrapping their head around. Yeah, you know, this really it, it it is a little difficult and there's a lot of miseducation out there. So we're really big on education. We put all of our clients, no matter where their history is coming from, we put them through our education process yeah. and we do have an online course, which at the end of the the podcast for your listeners, we're gonna give them free access to our course. Sorry if I Interrupted. No, I was yeah, I was going to add on to uh, what you said there is that uh, Serena. One of the things that um, I think is important is that it, people are, aren't educated. They're typically in the financial world. They're educated uh, or instructed to hand their money over to somebody else. Yeah, and I think that's one of the key differences. And Anthony mentioned this earlier, but if you look at real estate investors and business owners, man, Anthony and I've been in this space for fifteen years. The first seven, nobody had a clue what infinite banking was. Yeah. The last seven is just caught on fire. Yeah. And the reason I think that it's caught on fire in those two demographics is because of the personality of those two individuals is that they want control. Mm -hmm. And typically every investment uh, opportunity out there uh, takes away control from them. Uh, this provides way more control, right? Is you have your money in your policy, you can take a loan for whatever you want. There's no one out there dictating what you can do with it. Uh, you asked for examples on how we invest it. Uh, we've, we've got a bunch of them, but the two best places that people can leverage money to, uh, on the policy, one is going to be real estate. And then the yeah. other one is going to be into a business. Yeah. And I think the education piece is extremely important because, you know, speaking for myself, I actually had a policy like this and I really had no idea what you could really use it for. Like I understood, yes, there's this cash value to it. I didn't understand you could borrow against it and the policy loans and all of that. And I think maybe, a year into COVID or so, I was like, why do I have all this insurance? Like, I don't need all this stuff. And I canceled it, not even realizing yeah. like what the true value of it was because the advisor I was working with didn't ever articulate it as robustly yeah. as you should have, you know? And now that I've gotten to know a lot of people that are in this space, I'm like, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> so, like, <laughs> to get some of my capital back to kind of start fresh and, and go through things, um, set it up kind of the right way. But on that note, we're just going to take a really brief break for our word from our sponsors and we'll be right back. At ProVenture, we are committed to helping individuals achieve their real estate goals all across the country. Whether you're just starting or looking to expand your investment portfolio, our tried and proven methods are designed to help guide you every step of the way. With our expert support, navigating the complexities of the real estate market becomes an opportunity for growth and success. Let's turn your real estate ambitions into a reality. Thanks again for following along with this episode of Inspired to Invest. In addition to real estate, investing, and running my own brand experience agency for 18 years, I also published a book called The Accidental Entrepreneur, in October of 2021. This is my story and it chronicles how I turned tragedy into triumph to embrace my destiny in entrepreneurship. If you're interested in picking up a copy, you can find the link at serenahomesrealtor.com and you can also find my link tree with all of the retailers in the details below. Thanks again for your support. Welcome to the Wealth Club, an exclusive community dedicated to elevating your journey towards financial freedom, well-being, and success. 
The journey to 1% starts here. Join like-minded leaders and commit to growth for the mind, body, bankroll, and soul. Learn all the proven techniques to change your life forever with direct access to a massive team of more than 10 tried and true experts. Moreover, members enjoy priority access to investment opportunities, job openings, and partnerships within the community. For just $1 a day, members gain entry to specialized forums covering a wide spectrum of fields. Discover diverse income streams, new opportunities, collaborations, and employment. Partake in weekly Zoom calls with our team and join monthly live Q&A sessions. Compete and win cash prizes. Active members top the leaderboard for monthly rewards. Ready to get started? Join today to unlock your true potential. To sign up, go to school.com forward slash The Wealth Club. Inspired to Invest is proud to support the Beyond Success program. In today's complex world, it's absolutely crucial for our youth to learn how to take charge of their financial future. We believe that every young person deserves access to accurate, practical financial information. Designed to bridge the gap, the Beyond Success program leverages a comprehensive educational bootcamp to equip young minds with essential financial literacy skills. At Beyond Success, it's not just about teaching financial literacy, it's also about fostering a foundation for a prosperous and empowered future. Join us. Together we can build a brighter financial future for the next generations. Join us. Together we can build a brighter financial future for the next generations. Hey everybody, welcome back to Inspired to Invest. And we're talking about infinite banking and how you can leverage it as a business owner, entrepreneur, and real estate investor. Now, one thing I always like to ask people is what would you say is the craziest thing that you've experienced as a real estate investor or as a business owner? I would t- one of the craziest things I had uh, with one of my rental properties, I got this bill um, for some repair work on one of my rental properties and it turns out I had nine bullet holes Ooh. in the property. Oh dear! Fortunately, and I even saw the pictures. Uh, fortunately, uh, it was on the outside. Um, fortunately, nobody got hurt. But you know what that did do is that inspired me. I've always, <laughs> I've been meaning to to get my properties in an LLC. Yeah, and I and and get an asset protection trust. I just didn't make the phone call, but yeah. I'm like, that inspired me. Hey, it's time. <laughs> yeah. it's time for us to get this thing uh, done. Yeah. That's a big one. Uh, as far as the craziest, uh, what I would say is, uh, just losing money is, uh, I bought, uh, just under the wrong premise years ago, I bought some raw land and I bought it, uh, uh, for pure speculation. Right. We're in Las Vegas, outside of Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, there was supposed to be some development. I went out and I bought some land and sat on it. And uh, it's lost, continued to lose value year over year. Right. And so one of the uh, craziest things that I would share with people is that, uh, right, is you got to you got to buy on, on principles. You can't just buy in pure speculation. Um, yeah. It's a mistake that a lot of people made myself personally. So uh, yeah. that's in our course as well. Yeah, no, I think that's a big one. Now, is there anything that you would say that you feel like are one of the biggest challenges or obstacles that you've faced as you've grown and scaled? I, I tell you, for me, I'm not only nearsighted visually, but also mentally. Like I could see a couple, maybe one or two steps ahead of me, yeah. but I can't see five or 10. And so I that has hindered my growth. Yeah. Because I kind of don't think I can, or I can't see, it seems too hard or too far or yeah. I don't. And so one of the things that we did to kind of help that is we implemented the uh, entrepreneur's operating system yeah. or the yeah. EOS. Yeah. And that kind of forced us to really start thinking about long-term and w- what is that long-term goal yeah. and what that allowed us to do is to build in systems. Cause again, I was like a solo preneur. When I had my CPA firm, it was yeah. kind of me. I, if I wanted it done right, I had to do it, yeah. which is partly why I got burnt out. Yeah. But being able to incorporate the EOS and build the systems and feel comfortable with the teams and having uh, people help um, has really extended my uh, vision. Yeah, no, that's a big one. Uh, now, in terms of things that you're 
you feel like you're very proud of? Is there anything that stands out to you that, you know, you feel like is one of your biggest successes? Yeah, I would say one of the things I'm most proud of. Uh, Working with me. <laughs> I would say stay in the course. It is as an entrepreneur, uh, I look back at kind of my career. And when I got into kind of the advising space is you get pulled in so many directions and everybody tells you that you have to do everything. And uh, man, you know what? Our decision early on has been to focus on one thing and get really, really good at it. Yeah. And we've been doing this for 15 years. And I, I say this and I don't want to have it to come off as bragging in any way. But uh, man, we've, we've focused, we specialized over the last 15 years. And I'm proud to say that I think we're one of the top IBC practitioners in the country. Yeah. And so uh, that doesn't come overnight. It comes through years of just staying the course and making sure you're providing value to your client. So that'd be the biggest thing I'm proud of. Yeah. Now, when it comes to advice, I'm sure that you know, infinite banking is obviously a big part of that, but would you say that there's anything else that stands out to you as some of the best advice that you've received? Man, so much. Yeah. I got one of you. Go, go for it. Yeah. One of my, one of my favorite, I alluded to it earlier. One of my favorite pieces of advice is that words are important. And if you've got somebody out there that's just listening and just getting into real estate or thinking about taking that first step, one of the best things that they can do is they can go look up these three words. One is going to be speculating, one is going to be in saving, and then one is going to be investing. In our industry, those words are often misused uh, uh, simultaneously, right? Interchangeably, but they mean drastically different items. And so look those up. And anytime you see those words, make sure you understand exactly what you're doing. Yeah. One of the things I share with clients is the act of saving is an intentional act that should be kind of a monthly like, hey, I need to take some money out. I need to put it away somewhere safe. Yeah. Uh, investing, investing. there's a level of due diligence that comes along with investing, right? It's not just throwing money at something. Most yeah. of the time, it's going to be investing in something that you know and you understand and that you've got an advantage in. Yeah. Speculating is where you're just throwing money and you're hoping and praying that it works out for you. I've done this, right? I already shared that story. Yeah. But this is what 90% of people are doing out there is they're just purely speculating and they believe that they're investing. Yeah. And so if somebody's out there just getting started or looking to reassess kind of what they're doing, man, go look those three words up, write down the definitions, and then maybe categorize some of the things that you're doing based upon the definition. And I think they'll be surprised. Yeah. And I think it's also important to that point, just to also consider strategies that require change. So there could be something that you've done for a period of time, and then there's a shift in the market and it requires you to look at it through a different lens or, or make a change because what was working five to 10 years in a row, suddenly mm -hmm. it's no longer working. Right. So I think you just have to keep your ear to the ground and just be mindful of shifts that could impact what you thought was like a tried and true strategy. Right. Um, when it comes to financial freedom, would you say that you have a particular number in mind? And I know a lot of investors like to, you know, put their number of doors on their Instagram bios and stuff like that. So, I mean, it means different things to different people. It could be cash flow, return on time. Like, would you say that there's something in your mind that you're reaching towards? I did for me, I got a number 10 grand a month. Now that might, that might sound like a lot of money to some people and it might sound like a small amount to some people, but I feel comfortable that that I can survive off at 10 grand a month if yeah. I needed to. But what I've done is I want I'm my goal is to have that for multiple sources. Yeah. So I want to have the 10 grand from my long-term rentals. I want the 10 grand from my land flipping business. And then also we love what we do. So I don't really consider this too much of a work or a job. So my, I want to get 10 grand of passive income from my business uh, uh, as well. So yeah. then if one doesn't hit or I'm sure I could live off 30 grand, uh, 30 grand a month. Yeah. Um, my wife may differ. I was surprised but, when you uh, said 10. I'm like, all yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Well, it needs and wants, I guess. Right. Well, yeah, right? yeah. that's for you both. Uh, we, we've, I'll, I'll jump in there. Um, we, we've, we've been in this space for a while, but uh, infinite wealth, uh, we're going on our fifth year. And to be honest, Serena is the first several years, it was kind of like, Hey, can we, can we have a business relationship? Right. Can we work together? Uh, well, we figured out that we can, and we're having a good time. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so n- now what we've done the last 18 months is we've actually expanded infinite wealth quite a bit. We've actually doubled in size nice. and it's not out of uh, selfish needs. It's man, once you realize uh, uh, the impact that you can have on individuals, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. And so uh, for the first several years, we kind of stayed at a certain size, just, Hey man, you know, we're living a great life here. This is a lot of fun. Yeah. And now we're going to expand this thing out. Bring in, we are bringing in additional people and uh, having a much bigger impact. Yeah, for sure. Now, since the name of this podcast is Inspired to Invest, I always like to ask people what's a particular quote that motivates or inspires them? I've got one. Anything jump to mind? Yeah, uh, yeah uh, mine is, uh, I believe it's Proverbs 13, 22. It's a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. So Anthony talked about vision earlier. Uh, I have the same thing, right? I think a lot of people struggle. I get uh, kind of blinded with what's immediate in front of me. Um, even as a business owner, right? You get bogged down in those day-to-day tasks. Yeah. And you have to be intentional to kind of bring your head up and not work on the business, not work in the business, but on the business. Yeah. And I think that quote has always reminded me over the years to kind of keep my vision long-term uh, and make sure that I'm not planning just for me, but I'm planning for my kids and also my children's children. Yeah. You know, and I would add, think long term, yeah. and th- that's helped me when I'm struggling or I have a bad investment or a bad period. I'm like, think long term because what what's going to happen in in the future. And I know with with this podcast, inspire to invest. I'm sure there's people that are just sitting on the fence. Like I know I read rich dad, poor dad, this all yeah. sounds good, but there's a little level uh, of fear and maybe they're, they're uh, cautious to take that first step. Let's think long-term like that first deal that you do or two, the goal should be of getting the education and experience for the next one. If yeah. you make money, great. But the, the key thing is we start thinking long term and then we when we get hit with these small obstacles, it helps us uh, be able to see past that. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think there's so many more resources out today than there were maybe 10 years ago, right? So you can educate yourself, I think, fairly quickly by taking advantage of things like this and then you can take action and ideally just get where you want to go that much faster. Now, mm-hmm. for anyone that wants to get in touch with you guys to learn more about Infinite Wealth, what's the best way for them to reach you? Uh, well, we're on all the social media yeah. channels, infinite wealth consultants. We're going to put in the show notes, uh, our like link tree. So you have link to our, uh, podcast. We do a lot on, uh, YouTube, some long form, but then we also do the, the, the short form on yeah. all of the social medias. And what I would encourage people, if you're, if you're in the real estate space, you owe it to yourself to look into infinite banking. Yeah. Maybe when you look into it and it's not for you, this isn't for everybody. Yeah. But if you can find the right person and and, and the right coach that can guide you to in, to improve the results that you do with your investing, infinite banking can be a great tool. And one of the reasons that I like, one of the many reasons why I like real estate. Maybe because I'm recovering CPA, but the tax advantages, I mean, uh, there's some amazing tax advantages Yeah. and there's some tax advantages of infinite banking. Not only is your policy growing tax-free, but we can actually create tax deductions when you use it for real estate. Yeah. So we take real estate and encompass with infinite banking, we're really taking advantage of the... Uh, oh, 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 of the tax code. Yeah. Serena, sure. Serena a, a specific resource that uh, if somebody's listening and they are interested where they can go is they uh, actually can go to infinitewealthconsultants.com forward slash inspired to invest. And where that'll take them, it'll take them to our online course. Uh, typically, we charge $500 for access, but as a thank you for having us, we'll give them free access to your listeners. When they go in there, what they're going to find is just pure education. Uh, There's no sales. There's no nothing. It's just a whole bunch of case studies and some videos educating some of the basics on IBC. So if somebody has some questions, great first step. I'll give you that link so you can put it in the show notes. And so you have that ability. You can learn about infinite banking for free. We're not going to ask for your phone number. We're not going to hound. You will be on our email list. Okay. But other check this out. Yeah. 
I mean, you have this free resource. (laughs) I mean, because it's not so much even about the money you make, it's about the money you keep, right? So just finding those, I don't want to say loopholes, but those strategies Mm -hmm. where you can obviously just make the most Mm -hmm. of what you're earning and ideally like preserve your wealth and leave that legacy, I think is really, really important. Is there anything else you wanted to leave anyone with before we wrap wrap up? I'd say take action. That's what I was going to say. I beat you to it. I beat you to it. We've been working together for too long. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Well, I would say, I would say read becoming your own banker, but I probably, most of your uh, listeners have read rich dad, poor dad. Yeah. Knowledge is not power. Action. Knowledge is a potential of power. You have to take that knowledge and put it into action. So whatever you're kind of debating about or having a little bit about fear, taking that next step, I encourage you to do so. Well, I'll I'll add on to take action then since you, I said it, but you took it is that, uh, getting community with other people, right? Is because, uh, one of the scariest things you can do is take that first step. And if you're standing there all by yourself, it gets really scary. Right. Yeah. But if you've got somebody or a community mm-hmm. around you that's already taken that first step, there's going to be a lot of encouragement. It's much less scarier and you can kind of see the success uh, that lies beyond it. Yeah, no, I think that's amazing. So we'll include all the resources, of course, in the show notes below. Thank you for taking your time out today to talk with everybody. And of course, for anyone that's watching or listening, thank you for your time. If you've enjoyed this episode, make sure that you like, comment and subscribe. You can also follow along on social at Inspired to Invest podcast. And remember, when you invest in yourself, the sky's the limit. Thanks again. Thank you to ProVenture Real Estate Corp for bringing you this episode of Inspired to Invest. The views represented on this podcast are for general information only and does not constitute investment or other professional advice or an offering of securities. The host and guests featured on Inspired to Invest make no representations as to the performance of any particular investment. Should you decide to make an investment, you are responsible for conducting your own review and analysis. It is recommended that you obtain independent legal accounting and tax advice from licensed professionals.